Hey y'all, it's Amber from Heartfully Stitch. This is the tutorial for the Magnolia Crop Tea. The Magnolia Crop Tea is a breezy summer tea with a softly curving U neckline, short sleeves, and a super relaxed fit. This top has about two to four inches of positive ease depending on the size you're making. For this tutorial, you'll need a five millimeter crochet hook or hook to obtain gauge, any number three DK weight yarn, measuring tape, scissors, a darning needle, and about four stitch markers. This tutorial is written for size medium. You can click the link in the description to download the full crochet pattern on Ravelry and follow along to the size that you want to make. To begin, we are going to start with our front panel. We will begin by chaining 74. Once we've completed our chain, we're going to single crochet into the second chain from hook and create a wedge stitch. A wedge stitch, chain 6 and single crochet into the second chain from hook. Half double crochet into the next chain. Double crochet into the next chain. Treble crochet into the next chain. Double treble crochet into the last chain. Skip 5 foundation chains and single crochet into the next chain. Create another wedge stitch by chaining 6 and single crochet into the second chain. Half double crochet into the next chain. Double crochet into the next chain. Treble crochet into the next chain. Double treble crochet into the last chain. Skip 5 foundation chains and single crochet into the next chain. Chain 6 for the wedge stitch. Single crochet into the second chain from hook. Half double crochet into the next chain. Double crochet into the next chain. Treble crochet into the next chain. And double treble crochet into the last chain. We will continue this stitch pattern of skip 5 chains, single crochet in next chain, and creating a wedge stitch across, ending with skip 5 foundation chains and single crocheting into the last chain. For the size medium, you should have 12 wedges at the end of this row. For this sample, I only have 5 wedges at the end of my row. Turn for row 2. Row 2, we are going to chain 5. This counts as a treble crochet throughout. We will single crochet into the top of the wedge stitch, working into the underside of the chains made in the previous wedge stitch, we are going to single crochet into the first chain. Half double crochet into the next underside chain. Double crochet into the next underside chain. Treble crochet into the next underside chain and double treble crochet into the last underside chain. Single crochet into the top of the next wet stitch. And repeat again. Single crochet into the underside chain of the previous wet stitch. Half double crochet into the next underside chain. Double crochet into the next underside chain. Treble crochet into the next underside chain. And double treble crochet into the last underside chain. We will continue working in the stitch pattern of single crocheting into the top of the wedge stitch and working into the underside chains made in the previous wedge stitch. We will double treble crochet into the last chain. Turn your work at the end of the row. For row 3, we will chain 1 and single crochet into the same stitch. Chain 6, single crochet into the second chain from hook. Half double crochet into the next chain. Double crochet into the next chain. Treble crochet into the next chain. And double treble crochet into the last chain. We will skip 6 stitches and single crochet into the next stitch. Create our next wedge stitch by chaining six 
and single crocheting into the second chain from hook. Half double crochet into the next chain, double crochet into the next chain, treble crochet into the next chain, and double treble crochet into the last chain. Skip 5 stitches and single crochet into the next chain. Chain 6 for the wedge stitch and single crochet into the next chain. Half double crochet into the next chain. Double crochet into the next chain. Treble crochet into the next chain. And double treble crochet into the last chain. We will end the row by skipping 5 stitches and single crocheting into the top of the turning chain. For row 4 we will chain 5. Single crochet into the top of the wedge stitch. Working on the underside of the chains, single crochet into the first underside chain. Half double crochet into the next underside chain. Double crochet into the next underside chain. Treble crochet into the next underside chain. And double treble crochet into the last underside chain. We will repeat by single crocheting into the top of the wedge stitch and working the wedge stitch in the underside chains accordingly. We will repeat this to the end of the row. We will end row four by double treble crocheting into the last stitch. You should have two full rows of wedges. For rows five through 28, we will chain one and double crochet into the same stitch. We will back loop only double crochet into the next stitch and in each stitch across. We will end rows five through 28 by double crocheting into the last stitch and turning. After completing the rows for the body and turning our work, we should be on the right side with the wedges pointed left. We will begin with the right strap. Chain one and single crochet into the same stitch. Create our wedge stitch by chaining six and working the stitches accordingly. We will skip five stitches, single crochet into the next stitch, and create a wedge stitch. We will repeat the skip five single crochet in next and wedge stitch four more times. Your right strap should have five wedges at the end of the row. Chain five and single crochet into the top of the wedge stitch. Working into the underside of the chains, work your stitches accordingly and continue repeating the single crochet in top of the wedge stitch and working into the underside chains across, ending with a double treble crochet in the last stitch. Rows 3 through 10, we will chain 1 and double crochet into the same stitch. Back loop double crochet across, ending with a double crochet into the last stitch. Turn after each row. You should have 31 double crochets at the end of your rows. After we've completed rows 3 through 10, we will fasten off and making sure that the right side of the front is facing us with the wedges pointed to the left, we will count 12 stitches from the last stitch of the right strap. Attach yarn and repeat rows 1 through 10 as you did for the right strap. Fasten off after your last row of the strap. Now your front panel is complete. We will now work the back panel the same as the front for the wedge rows. We will work rows 5 through 32 by chaining 1 and double crocheting into the same stitch. Back loop only double crochet across ending with a double crochet into the last stitch turn. You should have 74 double crochets at the end of each row. Now that we have completed rows 5 through 32, we want to make sure that our back panel wedges stick out past the front panel wedges when overlapping. We also want to make sure that we ended our back panel row on the wrong side so that when we turn our wedge rows will be on the right side with the wedges pointing to the left. For the back panel wedge row, we will chain one and single crochet into the same stitch. Create your wedge stitch by chaining six and working the stitches accordingly. Skip six stitches and single crochet into the next stitch. Create your wedge stitch by chaining six and working the stitches accordingly, skipping five stitches and single crocheting into the next stitch. We will repeat the stitch pattern of single crocheting into the next stitch, wedge stitch, and skipping five stitches across, ending with skipping five stitches and single crocheting into the last stitch. We will work our next wedge row the same as the previous wedge rows by chaining 5, 
and single crochet into the top of the wedge stitch. Working into the underside of the chains made in the previous wedge, work your stitches accordingly, ending the row with a double treble crochet into the last stitch. We will work rows 9 through 16 by chaining 1 and double crocheting into the same stitch. Back loop only double crochet across, ending with a double crochet into the last stitch. Turn after each row. After your last row, fasten off. Now that we have completed our front and back panels, it's time for assembly. We will place our back panel with the right side facing up and the wedges pointed to the left. Our front panel will go on top with the wrong side facing up and the wedges pointed to the right. We will seam the shoulders, measure about 6 inches from the top of each side or just above the wedge rows and place your marker. From that marker we will seam down the body of the top leaving the wedge rows of the front and back unseamed. After seaming, turn the top right side out. Attach yarn to the opening of the armhole made when you seam the sides of the body. Chain one and single crochet into the same stitch. Single crochet evenly around, slip stitching to the last stitch. Do not turn after this first row. Rows two through five, we will chain one and double crochet into the same stitch. Back loop only, double crochet around, ending with a slip stitch into the first stitch and turn. Repeat the sleeve instructions for the second sleeve. I highly recommend blocking your finished magnolia crop tee for a more defined and fresh look. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I can't wait to see y'all's version of the magnolia crop tee. If you would like to see more of my crochet pattern tutorials, please like and subscribe.